Whoa, this thing has got some girth to it. I think it's pretty damn big sitting down in the box. I had to open it up. Well, maybe we'll leave it white. I can find an Ericsson scheme for it. I might say, I might, you never know. The damn box is damn near four feet long. 18 and a half inches wide. 17 and a half inches tall. It's a big ass box. All right, so we got the tail on just temporarily. This is actually a tight fit, so it's not bad. Uh, about 67 and a half inches long. It's got some girth to it. Girth. Shut up, iPhone. And some of the interesting things are they've got panel line detail. That's pretty damn impressive. The rivets are still kind of big, but those could be, you know, big, big ones in these spots. I don't know. But there's all kinds of rivet de not rivet detail, but uh, panel lines. We're all through this thing. And this is the white version, so there's no... It feels like just primer. The way it should be. Just primer. But that looks pretty cool. The glass on it looks pretty good. A little thin like it always is. The doors are pretty typical. Still using the little plastic things on there. The sliding door kind of blows a little bit. We might do something different because that's all the further that it will open. Just because of the way the uh, uh, things are down in here with the way they, you know, slide. Which they slide, but they don't open, you know, they're the typical. When, you, when, you, when they slide out, they'll sag one way or the other. Kind of like on the 412. The 412 kind of, nah, but it does slide, so. And we looked in here and there's already, the servo's already in for the retracts. It looks like they have one servo for the rear and one servo for the front. So we'll delve into that. I'm not too happy about how they have the, the top mounted. It's kind of loosey goosey. They have this little pin that it's spring loaded. So you have to pop the spring and then you can lift it up. But they did split it at the rotor head. So I, I give them kudos for that one. So typical Roban, it's it, pretty good. They put carbon along the edges and stuff to help support it up. It looks like they designed a little bit of space here so that you can, I'm assuming, when I get it figured out, uh, that you can pull the mechanics out and have the tail glued on. Uh, we'll see, we'll see how this does. It, uh, yeah, we'll see how these, how you doing here? This is not a, uh, system I think I will end up using. So I need somebody who's got a uh, AC-225 around them so they can give me some pictures of rivets and shit like that. This is going to be a lot of rivets on this thing and whatnot. So uh, there was something else on here I was trying to find. But yeah, they got, they've got panel lines all over this thing. I'm just curious if, if they're really deep into the fiberglass or not they're, they're, they're pretty predominant and it's nice they're there and not like half of them are <laughs> somewhere else but uh, they're a 700 millimeter blade but they're square tip they got the lights and all this stuff all the little details and doodads and what you call it the four blade tail pretty decent quality like it, like always. This is what I was uh, was coming across. The little bell crank for the tail control rod. This is actually a piece of, couple pieces of carbon, as you can see in there. And uh, it's pretty stout. So instead of those green things that we had on from before, 
And I don't know how far back they went with the little green plastic pieces that always snapped right there. But uh, they get kudos for that one. Yeah, should be a fun, interesting project to delay me even more from finishing the crane. Yeah, yeah, well, we, we gotta get figured out.